All right, good first day. Uh, pleased with the intensity and uh, you know the energy of the group, which is it you know it better be uh, a lot of energy on your first day of uh, spring practice, uh, or we'll get them back in the weight room for eight hours. So uh, good first day, good energy. Um, pleased with what I saw out there, and um, you know look to build on that the rest of the week. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Brian, you have some visitors there. Yeah. Uh, what's Jeff, just on the offensive side of the ball, he's uh, uh, he'll be working uh, as an analyst for us on the offensive side of the ball, and uh, you know we'll have you know a myriad of different uh, things that he'll be responsible for, different projects on the offensive side of the ball, which uh, you know we'll detail out. But um, you know Jeff obviously is uh, you know uh, somebody that uh, you know, I have a great deal of respect for, and we've worked together for over 25 years, so. Um, you know, he'll, you know, as, as we move forward, he'll, um, he'll have different responsibilities in terms of offensive uh, oversight, in terms of, you know, it could be, you know, from a game plan perspective, certain things, um, you know, looking at, um, you know, detailed items that I put together for him. But, you know, just more brain power in the room is, is what we're looking for and a lot of experience. Um, so, you know, great to have him, you know, on staff with us. Yeah, it's an off-the-field position. Yes, off-the-field position. Nick Martin uh, with his move to center there. What was it last year? I mean, it was an injury that prompted the move to right guard. Why is his role more valuable at center? Well, he, you know, obviously his, um, his football intelligence is, um, is, is one that we really like. Um, you know, the guard position uh, for for us was one where, you know, we were we were kind of in between with um, experience with with um, you know with Matt and 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 then a size issue, you know, and we needed to get bigger at guard, and Nick gave us a little bit more size, but he's ideally fitted now that we've got the size with Nelson and Bars um, that we can get him back to a natural position. So. Uh, not wanting to play those freshmen last year um, really puts Nick back into a natural position. He's got the smarts to play center. He's got the athleticism. And we really think he's got the size to play there. So whether you put somebody on him, on his nose, he can handle him. But he's athletic enough um, you know, that he can move and, and uh, be part of a combination box. You still saw us defensively last year at times. Some of your teams going up tempo and they're not able to Yeah. Is there any way to get around that? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. Yeah, I think we've learned quite a bit from it in terms of, uh, you know, how to communicate our defensive structure, um, you know, some of the things that we've, um, you know, researched. And um, matter of fact, Coach Elliott's been on the road um, doing some research on those things that we think we've, we've picked up some things that have been very useful for us. We've um, change some terminology and communication, um, regardless of who's on the field, um, to allow us to to be prepared for those kinds of scenarios. Yes. Do you still feel that you can get the people or packages or alignments you want to, even when other teams? Yeah, I, I think I think there are certain times when you can't. Um, you know, some of the areas, for example, that that we were vulnerable is when the ball was um, away from our sideline. You know, where we were trying to move, you know, a nickel off the field and, and we were getting, um, you know, quick screen into the boundary when we couldn't get, you know, our personnel back onto the field. So, you know, I think we've, you know, we've picked up a number of things that teams want to do with, with the, the quick tempo. Um, and um, I think we're, 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 I think, better in, in our communication and better in terms of knowing the situations where, um, you know, we can't make it. You know, a lot of it is um, it's very similar to hockey. You know, you're not going to make line changes if uh, the puck's in your end. And uh, you got to be very, very careful in terms of when those line changes happen, when you go over the boards. And um, there's, there's a lot of similarities to that. And I think we picked up a lot of that in terms of the real fast teams um, that, that work under those uh, kind of premises. Right. 
Yeah, Price Tracy uh, is our special teams analyst, um, and uh, he'll work, you know, obviously in that role. Uh, he was an intern for us last year, so he moves now into uh, that full-time role. Uh, and we are um, still in the process of hiring a defensive analyst. Well, I think what we're seeing, you know, with him more than anything else is, um, you know, his his maturation in in terms of the game and technique. I, I don't know that, you know, Cole's necessarily a guy that uh, is is prepared to um, uh, take over as a, a vocal leader, uh, but he's leading by example. You know, he's leading by uh, consistency in his work. Um, and, and I think that that gives us, you know, some veteran presence back there, um, which is what we're encouraging him to do. Brian, CJ cross training at running back. Did his performance get, sorry, against LSU kind of open your eyes to the possibility of moving him there, or did you kind of have that as a plan? All along? I think it was cumulative. I think during the year, I think we saw um, that potential, and we had always kind of talked about it. Um, during the year in terms of we, we always like getting the ball in his hands because he's outstanding um, when he his run after the catch, if you just go back to the Navy game, you know, he gets the ball in his hands, he's got a chance to go. So um, I think it was more just a cumulative uh, workload that, that gave us that. And certainly his speed, um, you know, when he has the ball in his, in his arm is pretty clear even against SEC talent. Pad level um, is probably the biggest adjustment for him. I think you'll get a chance to talk to him a little bit about it. I think uh, I think you'll get some pretty insightful comments from him. And it's not as easy as it looks. Um, and and he's he's going through the process right now of figuring it out. And but he's such a natural athlete. I think he'll he'll pick it up. Uh, he's, you know, he's really trying to break out from just worrying about his own position and taking care of that to really bringing other guys along. He's, I mean, he's been a great mentor for Tavon Coney, for example. He's worked out with them all off season. You know, the seven week program. Um, he's really just been outstanding in terms of, you know, reaching out and uh, doing more than just worrying about himself. He's, he's really, uh, you know, thinking about others now, and so that. That's one of the real great signs of, of being a leader. So I think he's more, much more comfortable with his own position where he can start to now influence others. Part of that, maybe not just for him, but second year of the system, or not this spring, this point last year, and for all the spring, their defense was breathing through the fire. Yeah, that, that, and then going outside to inside, a new position for him. So new terminology and a new position. We keep both of those on him. Now he's got both of those down to a point where he feels comfortable that he can start you know, to do some leading as well. Right in your freshman class, that will be sophomores next year. Uh, can you talk about their maturation? And, and uh, a lot of people thought, you know, maybe they're a little underrated as a class and maybe a building block for the future. Well, you're going to see a lot of them play. Last year, we played a lot of freshmen, but you'll even see some more guys that didn't play, um, you know, this year. And I, I think that that's, uh, they'll play more prominent roles. Um, and so I think cumulatively, when we look back on that class, I think we're going to say that that was one outstanding class across the board from, you know, skill players to linemen, both on the offense and defensive side of the ball. So, um, again, I think, you know, we all evaluate classes coming in. I think if you just now take a, a you know, different perspective and look at them two years um, or a year later, you know, where are they? And I think we'll look at that class and say, look, look where they are in terms of, uh, across the board influencing this football team. I think this year you're going to see a lot of them. Brian, uh, you mentioned that you wanted Mike Sanford's number one job to be coach of the quarterbacks. That's number one. Right. Have you seen an impact there yet through the winter conditioning part? And what would you like to see in terms of his imprint on yeah, that's a good question. Um, I want to see a consistency uh, and attention to detail uh, more than anything else um, and uh, eradicate um, any of the um, 
I would say, gray area as it, as it relates to the fundamentals of the quarterback position. Um, we're not going to open it up to uh, interpretation as to what's expected for footwork, read progressions, uh, sight adjustments, um, all those things. And uh, just even today, um, they all look the same. Um, first step progression, um, you know, where the ball's going, communication, uh, it's exactly what I was hoping for in the first day. Um, there's no misunderstanding about what's being taught and how it's being taught and what's expected. There's no, uh, well, I thought, or, you know, can I do it this way? It's, this is how we want it done. This is what we expect. And it's not done in a, um, I'm going to hitch you over the head, you know, manner. It's, this is how we do it. This is how it's taught. And he does it in a, in a very professional, um, well-communicated manner that's non-threatening, but it's clear and concise. And um, I was impressed with the way that the quarterbacks handled it and looked today in the first day. Yeah. Um, handling that, that the body in, in terms of uh, catches outside the framework. You know, the, you know, sometimes he leaves his feet. We saw at LSU, he left his feet a little early and kind of looks awkward sometimes. The low catches, the balls that, that, that he has to extend for. So I, I, we feel really good about um, understanding routes and, and really picked up football quickly. Um, we were worried about his learning curve early on. He's picked that up. Um, extremely well. Now it's making uh, those uh, non-conforming catches, if you will, the ones that he's got to reach, the ones that he's got to elevate, twist and turn. Um, those are the ones that we're looking for. Today he had a ball that was a little bit low, and at times his body gets in the way. And so we've got to kind of smooth out some of the rough edges on, on some of those more difficult catches. That's what we're working on right now. It's a good question. Justin Brent is in his second spring. He's got a lot of physical tools. He's got um, the athletic ability to compete at, at a high level. Um, what I see from him is inconsistency um, with somebody with the kind of tools that he has. And so we're demanding more from him. And, and, and he's got to bring it. This is his second spring, and I'm not going to wait around for him um, you know, for the light to go on uh, because there's too many good players. Um, and, and I really like him as a football player in terms of his skill set. But, but he's got to practice better and he's got to be more consistent. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you.